The old school aesthetic of rendering 3D as ASCII characters in the command line has always been appealing to me. I find it very clever that these renderers use characters based on the density of the pixels to represent brightness instead of their intended meaning. In this video, I try to replicate the style and explore how it can be used as a way to render video games. I'm Leonard and welcome to Useless Game Dev. Let's get started. I'm going to be leveraging Unity's renderer, letting it do all the heavy lifting of rendering the scene so I can convert the resulting image to ASCII. The first step is to grab the texture from the camera and blit it to a render texture. Since a single character will represent a group of pixels, the render texture has a super low resolution, once again letting Unity do all the heavy lifting of pixelating the texture for us. The real magic then is to convert the texture to a string of characters. The goal of this is to take the grayscale value of each pixel and pick a character that has enough filled pixels to match this gray ratio. Obviously, the color black will be represented by a space. For the color white, an at sign seems to be the densest character available. And then I played around with multiple ranges of characters but eventually settled on this one. Then converting the texture to string is really straightforward. Traverse the texture pixel by pixel, getting the grayscale value of the color of each pixel, and then picking the right character. It's already looking pretty good, to be honest, in this simple demo scene I made. The first easy improvement to make upon this is to add a curve to remap the grayscale, which allows us to adjust the contrast and thus tweak the final result. As a second improvement, I want to add color. After all, most terminals now support color, so a modern day ASCII renderer should offer that feature. Interestingly, if we consider a color in the HSV space, that's for hue, saturation, value, we can see that the character we pick is already taking care of the brightness component. Meaning we want to colorize our character not with the pixel's original color, but with a full brightness version of that color. This is how I'm doing it in code. And that's how colors would look like if we didn't use ASCII characters to render the brightness. Notice how most shades are removed by the fact that every color is at full brightness. I don't think we're going to add any more improvement to this for now. However, it currently runs dreadfully slow. I'm talking like 5 oh. FPS kind of slow. A bit of profiling tells me the main pain points currently are that concatenating strings is very slow, Text Mesh Pro is taking its sweet time rendering a mesh of the text, and manipulating colors, especially to and from HSV space into their hexadecimal notation takes a lot of time. Let's replace the basic string manipulation with a string builder. That's what they're for and they're bloody good at it. Next, Text Mesh Pro. TMP is great, it's crisp, it has a lot of features, but it turns out that creating a mesh each frame for over 9000 characters is not optimal. Besides, I don't need most of the features it offers. So let's compare it to the legacy text options available in Unity. The legacy UI text renders really blurry and doesn't support rich text colors. That's a hard pass. The immediate Moji UI though, or ImGUI, is lightning fast and does support rich text color. So we're going with that. 
Lastly, moving pixel colors from RGB space to HSV and then computing their hexadecimal or HCML notation is really costly. And for this, I have no solution because I, I really need those features. So I default to what I do best, just simply caching the resulting string for each color in order to reuse the result, thus trading CPU time for memory space. This really helps the frame rates, but it would be a scaling issue if I was making a proper game. I'm back at a somewhat decent frame rate of approximately 20 FPS. Now the next thing I want to do is to move this to a render feature in Unity's Universal Render Pipeline. That way I can drop it into any game project and see how it goes. I'm looking at Dragon Crasher, a Unity demo 2D project. Looking at the color and the ASCII version side by side, the background is interfering a bit too much with the rest of the game, which could be fixed easily by simply removing it or partially fading it. Because of the low resolution, you can somewhat make out the dragon, but the three characters in the middle are just a blurry mess. I doubled the resolution of the image and tried again. It's still not great, but a lot more readable. And the dragon's flames look kinda cool. Let's try another free Unity demo project with a 3D game kit in third person view. It's still a mess because there's way too much detail, but somehow with the 3D camera moving constantly, the shapes appear clearer as the viewer gets a better perception of the depths of the scene. At a higher resolution, it's a lot more readable, but at this point it's like the characters start looking like individual pixels, which is of course going to look a lot better. So, in conclusion, in order for this visual style to work, we need a high contrast game with very few moving objects on screen and or a 3D camera that is moving constantly, allowing the viewer to make out the perspective. That's why, as the video is ending, I'll leave you with this high contrast 3D maze and I hope I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one!